What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the hardworking happy hour. I'm Sean. And I'm Catherine. And as always, we'll be breaking down all things trades, entrepreneurship, and turning your creativity into a passion career. That's what we talk about every week. And we are going to continue to do that this week. But let's just state the obvious. We're in a new studio. We are in a brand new <laughs> studio. It feels like we are on the evening news. Yeah. We've got so official. There's lights. There's cameras to look into. I know. And we have these official <laughs> lights. Yeah. They're only $70 for the pair on Amazon, but they look so cool. <laughs> and they're on like big tripods and everything. Uh, you won't be able to see those in the shop, but it feels really cool. Are you excited? I'm so excited. I am it doesn't s- even feel real. It feels like, I don't know. I we're know. We're borrowing this, but we we built this whole thing. We literally did. So, in three uh, days. In well, really... I'd really say two like two days. Yeah. You demoed it. I Great demoed job it. on the demo, by thank the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Demoed it one day. Built yeah. Two days. And maybe, maybe in the, on the YouTube version of this, we'll, we can plug in a picture of what it looked like just yeah, before a couple days ago. Yep. That's a good idea. So good job on the demo. Thank you. Thank you. Good job on the build out. Thank you so much. You're what welcome. about the design? Oh, uh, the design, 10 out of 10. Ten out of 10. Thank you. Great. Thank you so great. much. Uh, <laughs> we've really, I think, knocked this out of the park. We got the space. We, yep. Well, you demoed it on Wednesday. Yep. Great job. About a half day demo. Yep. Great job. Thank you. And then Thursday, we all spent about a half day here. And then Friday, Mm -hmm. a full day. And we got the whole studio built out. We built a bar. We built this cool wall. We just did stuff with scraps. Uh, Yeah, most of it was like repurposed stuff that we... most of it was scraps. (laughs) Freaking worked out really well. Yeah. So that's exciting for us. Absolutely. Now we just need to build out the rest of the shop. Like, yes. We're like work <laughs> yeah, stuff gets done. Yeah, the rest of it kind of looks like a trash pile at the moment, but uh, uh it's be- yeah, that's because it is mostly a trash pile yeah, at the moment. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, it's it's got serious potential, and okay. we're working from the back to the front, <laughs> and it's going to be awesome. And honestly, though, it is just trash pile right now. Yeah. But that's like kind of one of the main like uses that we needed. Like a yeah. spot to just like when you're we're done a job to just like load everything up, have like a drop zone. True. It's going to be nice to like eventually give everything a place in here. Right. But for right now to just be able to drop it off somewhere and, you know, maybe hit it on a rain day, yeah. organize it a little bit. So we're building it out the rest of it uh, in the coming weeks and months. And uh, it's going to be a process. Yeah. But I'm psyched. I can't wait. It's very exciting. It's like a new phase in in the business, and it's like it does feel like it that. It feels like growth for it sure. It does feel like growth. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Good job. You as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> Do appreciate that. So we're excited about that, obviously. And this week we're we're going to talk about, I guess, quite a few things. We have quite a few yeah. things on the docket. What what were a couple of those things? Well, first of all, today is Max, your son's. Second birthday. So congratulations on having a two-year-old. Thank you so You've much. You've been a father for two years. I have. That's, That's insane. Yeah. It's really crazy. And you were at his party today. I was. He yeah. thinks he's three. He does. You he, ask him how old he's turning. He <laughs> keeps saying three. Yeah. Why? Where did he get that from? Did he, uh, just, he just decided that on his own? Well, he, and then he was also saying one. And we kept oh. saying two. So like, it's really just like an act of defiance. Gotcha. Like, and then he laughs. <laughs> we're like, how old are you turning? He's like, Pre, which is three. <laughs> and we're like, no, two. And then he's like, one. <laughs> so he's just doing it to mess with us, which is kind of makes it even better. Yeah. It's really yeah, funny. Yeah. He's really taking after his, after his oh, old man. He really pretty is. Good yeah. There. That's pretty good. So. Good and how, how have you been like reflecting on being a father for the past two years at all? Um, not really. No. Like, oh, well, like you've today. had a busy day, I guess. Yeah. It's been a busy day full of stuff. Um, but. It just, it doesn't seem like it's been two years. It's crazy yeah. that he's two. And uh, yeah, I think, I think it, it, what I did realize was I think it like refocused my energy into the things that are most important to me. Yeah. So like one thing that we were talking about today at his party was the Eagle Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And although I was very upset and a little bit distraught over it, uh, I wasn't like as upset as I think I typically would be. I think I've just been like so focused on being a dad and all that kind of stuff and with work that I just feel like uh, it's taken away like a little bit of that like focus on rooting for a sports team. Yeah. Which is weird, you know? Yeah. Do you feel like that? Uh, I don't have kids, so I don't know. I mean, just about the Eagles. (laughs) Oh, about the Eagles? Uh, You don't really care either way. 
I think it's I like it when it's like <laughs> it's fun to, to yeah. have something that's fun and look to look yeah. forward to and like a, the whole city was so like a buzz about it. But when they lost, I was not like yeah. I was like oh man. But the next day I was it was completely out of my brain. So yeah, <laughs> you know what you know what else I think it is. What like five years ago in 2017, I was like not only super excited, but I was like, this is going to be a party. <laughs> like we are going to go and it nuts. Was, yeah. <laughs> and it was a party and we drank a lot and we were screaming. Yeah. And this year I was like, well, I mean, I got to Max has to go sleep at some point. Uh, mm-hmm. I got to, you know, he's going to wake up tomorrow. I got to take care of him. <laughs> I got to go to work. So uh, I think that also maybe played into it a little bit. So maybe not just being a dad, but yeah, um, the non partying a lot less yeah so that's a good thing yeah i guess i don't know there you go. yeah Growth. yeah absolutely <laughs> so yeah that's pretty crazy to think about i'll probably maybe reflect over that a little more this week yeah now that the party's over yeah he's full two-year-old mm-hmm. so exciting stuff i guess yeah yeah it's crazy well congratulations thank and you so much I do appreciate birthday, that Max. thank and you had a, so much he had a killer party today he did he had a great time <laughs> he had a great time it was, it was fun so we should also talk about the fact that we revealed the oh, yeah. the backyard giveaway project yes. yesterday. Yes. We will be releasing details on that, I guess shortly. Yeah. 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 When 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 are we planning on uh let's let's give the people a little bit of a synopsis of where we're at with that process. Okay. So we have what we did was Sean sat down and made the design for the project. So we could show that to the person who was receiving it um, just so they didn't, you know, didn't, we don't want, didn't want it to appear like just some random, yeah, like we're just some random people showing up like, hello. Um, so we're Sean, be like, like, this, we're going to build your yeah, backyard gonna, and here's this the, is yeah, it. this yeah. is what we're going to build you. Um, so we surprised the person yesterday with the design. It was great. We'll definitely release some clips of that. So the design is pretty much already done. I assume we're going to meet with him at some point and just kind of go over everything and really button everything up. Yeah. Um, but I think we'll probably release some information and say who it is, who won, probably in the next week or two. Yeah. And then the build will be in June. Yeah. So things are moving along. It's very exciting. The, it is the, very exciting. The surprise went really well. I think that he was very confused and, and surprised. Yeah. And uh, he's definitely a person that does a lot for other people and not used to getting things himself. So I think that it really just took him aback. And uh, yeah, um, but it was great. It was I. I think it couldn't have gone better. Yeah, it, I mean, it's the first time I've ever done something like this. Yeah. So I wasn't sure like how he was going to react, and he he does spend like most of his time like giving back to other people, and he yeah. seems like a very like kind of chill laid back kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, so he was just like, he kind of like couldn't believe that. Like he was trying to grasp like what was happening. <laughs> and he was like, what? Like I'm getting something. Yeah. Like, he seemed like he wasn't, he wasn't used to being on that side of it, which was yes. really cool. Uh, but he was like super stoked. He called yeah. his wife, FaceTimed her. She was even more confused because <laughs> she was over FaceTime. We're like, yeah, yeah. we're here. Just giving. <laughs> she was like, what, what's going on? So we got some great footage of it. Yeah. Uh, we're really excited to like move forward with this yes. project and take the next steps to get it planned and actually yeah. execute it. So exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. It definitely feels good to have some movement on that front. So I feel like yeah. we're, you know. So probably in the next week or two, we'll be releasing the like clip of mm-hmm. revealing it to the person and we'll give yeah. a little bit more of a backstory on who the person is and what they do to give back. So that'll be really cool. Yes. And we can kind of roll right into the main topic of this episode, which is going to be figuring out a budget and how to price jobs. Yes. Perfect. Come right off of the job that we're going to do for free for somebody. Yes. Uh, but if you're going to do a job for free, you better know how much you're making on the right. projects that you're not doing for free because otherwise you might unintentionally be doing all your projects for free. Yeah. If you don't know how to price it. So, <laughs> and I get, do we have to disclaimer? This is not financial advice? Yeah. You're big on... We haven't done a good old disclaimer in a while. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Let's do one for, yeah. for fun. This is not, uh, not financial, financial advice. advice. Uh, this is just <laughs> how I like to look at it, and it works for us. It's not going to work for every business, depending on the size. Like, it, It's yeah. really simple for us because we're one crew. And mm. I, I just... I think that there's a lot 
of things out there with figuring out your budget and how to price jobs that makes it very confusing for some people. And you almost get like bogged down by all the numbers of like how much markup on this and your marking up materials and, and like your actual profit gets kind of like lost in translation sometimes. And it's like, well, I have a 30% markup on my materials and my labor and I'm still, you know, at the end of the year kind of breaking even like what's going on. I think some people, it'll help them to look at it in a more simple way. So we're going to go over how I have always done it and how I look at it kind of from an overall picture. I like to look at the whole picture of the entire year and then break it down. So uh, all of my overhead costs are kind of broken down for how many days of the year that we can work. Right. So, yeah. So we just jump into it. it? Do you have any other uh, housekeeping items that need to be talked about? before? 75 hard. How's that going for you? Oh, it's good. Another week. I just finished my second week. Yeah. You're not lying, (laughs) are you? I'm not lying. You're not cheating? Well, there was the whole granola bar incident of 2023. (laughs) That was big, yeah. Thanks for coming clean about it. It was a Nature Valley bar. It was a Nature Valley bar and... I thought that it was fine because it's a granola bar. Those are supposed to be good for you. It was like an almond butter was, bar. Biscuit. Almond butter is supposed to be good for you too. Yeah, it was. It's, and it's I was, all marketing out there. You know, they did a good job. They tricked marketing. you. Um, but yeah, the diet is definitely where I have been struggling the most. I've never been on a diet and it's like, this is yeah. all new to me and I'm not. Uh, yeah, I just feel like I'm a little bit lost when it comes to that. And I wish I picked a more strict diet that had more rules that were easier to follow. I feel like I chose something that is incredibly ambiguous and it then it yeah. leaves all the rules up to me. So to me, I was like, oh, I got to go. I'm going to run after work. I need to eat something on my way home. Yeah. It happened to be a nat- Nature Valley bar. And Sean so gracefully pointed out, Catherine, yeah. that's basically a dessert. It's basically <laughs> like, a cookie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I so was just, I was not trying to, Sean I was not trying me. to shame you. I was just trying, I was trying to look out for you. No, I do appreciate it. Yeah. I know that uh, your, your, your diet goal was very ambiguous. You were yeah. like, no added sugars and no junk food. Yeah. I feel like if you just do the no added sugars, like that's good enough. Yeah. It'll kind of eliminate like almost everything in the world. And, but yeah. junk food's junk just food like is, way too ambiguous. too ambiguous. Yeah. Cause that's it's like way too ambiguous. I don't know. And then we look. Steve told us to download that app. Oh, yeah. There's this app called Zuka or something. Z-U-K-A. Something like that. Yucca. Yucca? Yucca. Yucca? That might be it. Yucca. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. You scan products and it tells you how bad they are for you. And pretty much everything's terrible. Yeah. Um, One of those things being the Nature Valley Bar. Yeah. Not great. Um, Yeah. But yeah, it's just too ambiguous and it's too... Yeah, so next time if I do this, which what I decided with the Nature Valley incident of 2023 yes i decided that i w- you know if you mess up on 75 hard you're supposed to start over yes. and since this was more of a bending the rule than a breaking the rule i decided i'm just going to keep going because continuing yeah. is more important to me right now than stopping and starting over i think that that is that yeah. would take a lot of wind out of my sails and i will just commit to doing this again sailing in- reference we haven't done one of those in a while yeah. either <laughs> i haven't been sailing in a long yeah. time yeah um, so I'm just committing to do it, doing this again in the fall. Are you which gonna do case, it again? I'm gonna do it again in oh, the wow. fall, and I will Pick do something, something like I'll be vegan or something that has like, like very only drink water. set in stone. Yeah, maybe I'll like do no that. No food. No food. That's <laughs> just probably water. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than the Nature Valley Bar incident of 2023, I have done. People probably saw it on well. the news and everything. I know yeah. it was a big deal. Yeah, it was trending on Twitter. <laughs> I think. Um, yeah. But everything else has been going incredibly well. I'm like plowing through books. Great job. I'm going to train for the Broad Street Run, which is a 10 mile run. Great job. Since I'm already doing all this stuff, I might as well tack that in there somewhere. So, yeah. Um, I do think that the initial excitement of it is wearing off and it's oh, becoming it's... a little bit more challenging now every yeah. day to do all these things. But, yeah. um, but it's great. I've been, I'm, I'm still loving it. And thank you. Thank you. Great job. We'll we'll continue to check seventy five. That's like it's gonna uh, be over a, ten weeks. Yeah, it's gonna be like a. It's this gonna will be like an yeah. ongoing thing. Wow, I still have a lot to go. Hopefully, if you don't give up. Yeah. So yeah, I your your you. brother Frank today was he asked me about how it was going. So <laughs> shout out to Frank since he listens yeah. to this. Um, he was like, "Yeah, you said last week you were six days in." I was like, yeah, I know. It takes a long time for these things, but uh, it does. Yeah. So, 
did you did you want to know about my goals or yeah you, you have your goals just sorry don't care about that you said 75 hard 75 hard. one of us isn't committing to 75 hard so. yeah well How are your goals, uh, i'm committing to a whole year of challenges <laughs> here so uh this month i have to run 55 miles yeah and right now i am at 39 that's amazing yeah so Great I only job. have 16 more miles and yeah. I'm ahead of schedule uh, based on how many miles per day like it would break down to. So I'm a little ahead of schedule. And my other goal is to read 50 books this year. Uh-huh. Listen to because I do audio books. Yeah. And I am. Ju- I think I basically I'm on like the very ending credits of my sixth book. Nice. Yeah. Very so good. I am. I think I'm a little bit behind schedule on the books, but. I'll make it. I'll make that. Yeah. Up. I'll make that up. And so. how are you tracking the books and the uh, miles? I guess are you? I'm right. So I I I have a whiteboard in the dojo, uh-huh. and I wrote out all the months in like a chart. Uh huh. And then I wrote how many miles each month is my goal, and then I'm just writing all my runs, and then I'm also writing the books in which month I read oh. them. So as That's I finish nice. a book, I write it up on the wall. After I run, write that up on the wall. And I'm good to go. That's great. So, thank you. Do you, you. want to do the Broad Street Run? That's like, no offense. Child's like, play? Yeah. Because it's only 10 miles? It's only 10 miles. And I'm not like a competitive racer where I'm going to like try to like... I would, I'm would. i more into... So, I did sign up for that ultra marathon. Right. So, I think that's more my speed. So, you're just like an all or nothing kind of person. You don't want to do like silly little little races. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I am a way too accomplished of a runner for that. No, I just feel like uh, I can. I know I already know I can run 10 miles. I ran 10 miles last Saturday. Mm. So and I'm not really into like I don't want to necessarily see how fast I can run 10 miles. OK, so I like the challenge of like an endurance challenge more than that, where okay. so the race that I signed up for. I should probably disclose I was drunk when I signed up for it. <laughs> so I was hanging out with my friend, Tom, who did it last year. Right. And it is a eight hour race and you just run around Cooper River, which is like three and a half miles or so. Yeah. Uh, and you just see how many laps you can do in eight hours. And it's in December. So it's pretty cold. And he did 30 miles and he like wasn't really training too hard. It was just pure willpower. And Tom's like that mentally. He's just like, That's crazy. I'm just going to keep going. So wow, he's going to try to do 38 miles this year. And I guess I'll try to keep up with him. Okay. So uh, I like that challenge, like more of an endurance thing. Cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm not speedy. Yeah. I'm not out there trying to be, you know, the road runner. Yeah. I'm more like the turtle. Wins the race though. Yeah. The turtle and the road runner, you know, right. the road runner gets distracted trying to fight the coyote meanwhile the turtle's just trudging along yeah yeah that's how it goes right i think so i'm pretty sure (laughs) something like that get the gist of it yeah yeah i'm not entirely sure that i can run 10 miles i mean i can with that attitude i know (laughs) not with that attitude. i just don't know if i ever have i think recently the most i've ever like i've run recently is six miles if i ran 10 miles it was probably in like a long time ago like yes in my youth um so yeah i'm excited to try it yeah I've never done Broad Street before, so why not? Yeah. I did buy new shoes to like motivate myself and uh yeah. immediately gave me shin splints. So Yeah. So good on that. But did you uh, go to a store and get fitted for them? No, I did that with my current pair of shoes, and I feel like they're always just trying to sell you a bunch of stuff, and I hate that. Like they're like, oh, you gotta get you have to wear these socks, and then you have to wear these like in custom insole things that are $140 or whatever. Really? They never yeah. did that to me. No? Yeah, they probably were like, she looks rich. She, she looks, looks like, like she can she... afford this. Yeah, they look at me she like, like, I'm she surprised buys you're stuff. in here, dude. Like, <laughs> buy these shoes, I guess. Uh, but they just like, because they'll, they'll watch you walk and yeah. they'll see like how much pronation you have, like yeah. how much you roll. Mm-hmm. And uh, the right type of shoe can really do a lot for you. Yeah. So with these, I knew, so I knew all that from the last time I did this. Yeah. And then I'd like did like the little online quiz thing. And this is the ones that they told me to get okay. on the online quiz. Nice. So, because I do have very high arches, which lead to a lot oh, of problems. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah. You need some arch support. Yeah. Okay. So maybe okay. those insoles that they're trying to sell me. You probably do need those. I, I mean, I have them and for oh, my do? old ones, but I don't know if those are old and I need to get new ones. Probably. Anyway, this is 
probably not exciting for anyone else to listen to. But uh, <laughs> definitely not. This is not exciting radio here. Uh, anyway. All right. So anyway, are you complaining about your shin splints or whatever? So. All right, perfect. Let's move on. Uh, so yeah, I hope everybody is sticking to their New Year's goals. Yeah, I really feel like uh, I'm happy with my progress so far. Yeah, Frank saw me today and he said, "You look like you lost weight. Your face looks skinnier." I said, "Thanks, Frank. Appreciate wow. that. Very nice." Yeah. So shout out, shout out to Frank again. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's get into this talk okay, yeah. about setting up your budget, budget and talk. how I look at pricing jobs uh, to kind of, uh, I've kind of developed the system and uh, adjusted it over the years. But mm -hmm. when I first started, it was all about like, there's just so many people saying like, how much do you charge per square foot for yeah. pavers or for decking? And like, that's what people want to know. They want to know. <laughs> like, you know, what is the going rate in my market? So there's either those people that are like, what is the, this is what you get per square foot. And this is like the going rate. And then there's the other people that are like, that's the dumbest thing ever. Like no one can tell you how much to charge. You have to know yourself. Mm -hmm. But like there was nobody that was just like, okay, this isn't the way to do it. And you know, I, you can't just like make up a number that puts you completely out of the market. So like you have to find some sort of like sensible way to go about this, especially in the beginning. So I always looked at it. First thing that you need to do is figure out your, your fixed overhead, like the things mm -hmm. that whether you're out working or not, like is a cost of your business. Right. So for us from the very beginning, it was almost from the very beginning, all employees have been on salary. So I looked at that as an easier way to go about it because I can figure out that overhead. Like it's just yeah. a yearly cost. Um, yeah, I'm going to pay essentially for rain days. Like people are going to not be working, still be getting paid. I always mm -hmm. looked at that as a benefit for the employees and they appreciate that, meaning you build some more loyalty. But I also looked at it as an easier way to track my overhead. Yeah. So... That's number one. You figure out your fixed overhead, salaries, hourly wages, um, insurance, things like this shop. This is going to get added into our fixed overhead. Um, all of those things. And for us, it, it mostly comes down to those things. Salaries, health insurance, workman's comp insurance, uh, liability insurance, a lot of insurance. Yep. Pfft, what a racket <laughs> that is. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, and then also things like your tool allowances, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And that we just kind of look at what we spent on tool purchases and all of those things that aren't necessarily associated with one particular job. And we group all of that together and we figure out what that number is for the year. And then we can just work backwards and say, okay, uh, there's 52 weeks out of the year. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that we are going to work 46 of those weeks. So that gives you six weeks off for whether it's vacation or it's rain days or it's whatever it is. You know, you, you look at 46 weeks of productive work. Yeah. And then you divide that total overhead that you have and you divide it by those 46 weeks. And then you figure out what exactly it costs you to just have the business. Mm -hmm. And that's like the number one thing that everybody needs to figure out before you go any further. Because once you have that, that's it makes it really easy to then price out the job. Right. So let's get into that next. Yeah. Number two, pricing out the job itself. Mm -hmm. So now we have this overhead figured out. We've got it all dialed in. We yep. know how much it costs to operate per day. And for us, it's roughly $2,000 a day just, just to keep the lights on. Yeah. Metaphorically. Literally. So. Now. Literally now. <laughs> so we figure all of that stuff out. We have that number. Now right. we're going to price out a job. And this is the part I think that people just get confused with. And I'm not trying to say that this is the way that everyone should do it or that this way is better. There's a lot of people that are much more sophisticated that have, you know, really complicated systems to figure this stuff out. And there's a lot of like really successful business owners in the trades that do it a totally different way yeah. with great success. So this is just what works for me and maybe it resonates with you. So yeah, um, we go into pricing a job and 
the two things that we're trying to figure out are the material costs and the labor cost, which is essentially just how long the project's going to take. Mm-hmm. So the material costs for us are fairly, I wouldn't say simple, but they're a lot easier than figuring out the timeline. Yeah, definitely. So this is one thing that makes us a little bit different, I'd say, than some other companies is that I don't look at marking up materials because at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Like you're presenting the client with a price at the bottom of a proposal. It doesn't matter whether some of that price came from marking up materials or more labor or whatever. It's just they're going to look at that final number and make a decision. Is it worth it? Mm -hmm. So I always looked at it like, why should why should I make less money if they pick a cheaper material? If I'm doing a 30% markup on materials and we use wood decking as opposed to a composite decking, I'm going to make so much less on that material markup when it's still the same amount of time to install it. There's still all that same labor. Yeah. So essentially, you're making less money on a job because you're relying on that markup. And it, it doesn't even matter. Like That final number is all that matters to the client. They don't care if you're getting that from material markup or just you know throwing... $10,000 on at the end of everything and just saying, mm-hmm. that's what I want to make. So I think if you do that, it just makes it a lot simpler. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, that when you put it like that, it makes a lot of sense because I think that people who, like for us, we tend to use the same products. So we know, yeah, you know, we know what those things cost and how much you can adequately decide how much you're going to use and blah, blah, blah. But I always think about people who do like kitchens or bathrooms because then you're just completely up to the discretion of whoever is picking out those materials. And if it's you, you can decide that cost. But if, you know, if it's the homeowner saying like, you know, okay, I want really cheap uh, vinyl plank or whatever and then really expensive marble, whatever. Like you don't have any control over that. So it makes it really hard to, to decide how to price that out. Um, but that's a great point. You shouldn't have to make less because yeah, it takes the same same time. Sometimes it takes even more time if you're buying like a crappy product yeah. and then it's breaking as you're trying to install it yeah. or whatever. So that is it. That's a great point. And I think I think that like markup type of system, it kind of like originates from other types of businesses, mm-hmm. like you know, manufacturing and, and yeah. it's like a standard way of looking at things. And I think like I said, it's not something that you should disregard and like not implement because a lot of people do it like that. And I think especially higher volume businesses, it's easier to kind of have these set markups because yeah. you're relying on this huge volume and it all kind of like evens out in the end and you're making a consistent profit margin on all of this huge amount of volume work. Yeah. Whereas if you're like a smaller boutique company like we are, we don't want to make a bunch less money just because we're relying on some sort of markup on yeah. material. So, yeah, and I think it's easier for some people when they're if they're handling like a ton of inquiries, it's just easier to throw out of like like oh we charge yeah two hundred dollars a square foot or whatever like, or like just having like yeah or two fifty yeah. yeah whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> it's it like two fifty yeah uh so it's just easier to throw out a number when you're constantly having to say a number yeah but then that just also goes to you know, what we always say about screening people and talking to less people. Yeah, <laughs> that that's true. Like if you are, that is like a problem that we don't necessarily have because mm. we don't want to talk to every single lead. Like we want our website yeah. to do a lot of that work for us. So if you are a huge volume company, you can create these systems so you can kind of get it down to a square foot price where yeah. you know we're going to be profitable 90% of the time, like we might hit 10% of those jobs where like this system didn't work out and, yeah. and we took a hit, but 90% of the jobs like this system works really well and it allows us to turn around quotes really fast. So there you go. Like there's a, a place for it right there. Right. But, and a lot of times that's going to be on something like very standard. Yeah. It's like not yeah, super yeah. custom work. And so once again, that's fine. Another disclaimer. Yes. Right out of the gate. <laughs> this was just no the shame, no that hate. <laughs> made sense for me. Right. So we figure out the materials. Mm-hmm. The hard part is figuring out how long it's going to take. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> That's always the hard part for us because even if we're off on, say, the material takeoff, like, we can usually get really close. Yeah. At least, like, you know, if, if we're... 5% off on how many deck boards we use. Yeah, that's not great, but it's not a killer. Yeah. If we are, you know, 30% off how long it's going to take, and it takes an extra, you know, three weeks on, a, on an eight-week job, that's not good. Right. So we basically look at those two things. One of the biggest keys is, is really trying to kind of figure out all of your efficiencies and how long things take you mm -hmm. so that you can accurately estimate the amount of time that you spend on a job. So yeah, we now have our fixed overhead figured out. Mm -hmm. We have our material for this job figured out. Yeah. We have the time figured out. Hopefully, hopefully as we're really close. We can, yes. As best <laughs> as we can. And now all we need to do is say it's 10 weeks and we have a fixed overhead of $2,000 a day. That's how much is that a week? $10,000. $10,000. Good math there. Thanks. <laughs> math whiz. Whew. So that's $100,000 right there. Yeah. In just overhead. And that's that's not including any materials. That's just including your salaries, your insurance, all of that kind of stuff. So yep. I think just right there for a lot of people, that can be a wake up call. Like yeah. $100,000 like seems like a lot of money for a 10 week job. But that's just covering your overhead. Yep. Just barely. Yep. So we have that number. We figure out the material cost. Say the material cost is $60,000. Now we're at $160,000. So what you need to do, and hopefully that fixed overhead includes a salary for yourself as the owner. Now, on top of that, you want to figure out what is the profit that you want to make on it. And that has to meet somewhere in the middle of as much money as you can possibly get and what is a realistic amount yeah. that you can charge for this product. So your market is going to kind of like dictate that number for you, but you have a benchmark of what you cannot go below because then you are either working for free or paying the customer yeah. to stay busy. And you can kind of like test the waters to figure out what is the top end of what this is worth? You can start kind of uh, just using that as a benchmark to go against what other people are charging and say, okay, well, this company is is charging roughly this amount for this size project. We do much nicer work. We are, you know, we, we have cooler ideas. So we can charge more than that. And you're going to start to get a sense of how many jobs you're closing and the response that you get from some clients, where you're at in that, yeah. kind of spectrum because you can't just say, okay, it's hundred thousand dollars fixed overhead. It's $60,000 of material. And I want to make $1 million on this. So it's going to be $1.16 million. You could try it. Yeah. Should we try that? Worth a shot, I guess. We don't have to sell like one job. That would be pretty <laughs> <That'd be sick>. nice. <laughs> so you have to kind of, I think that is just a super, super simple way for people to figure out like where they are at with their costs. And then everything on top of that is just profit. Yeah. So you need to know what is the minimum that you could possibly charge. Because I think a lot of people haven't totally figured out that fixed overhead cost. Yeah. And like broken it down to a per day or a per week number. Because you look at something that's going to take, say, 10 weeks and it's $160,000, you're like, that seems like a lot of money. That seems like, you know, it's only 60,000 in materials. That's $100,000 in, in profit. But really, that's just barely covering your overhead. Yeah. So, and like I said, hopefully there's an owner's salary in there. Mm -hmm. But still, there's no cushion. <laughs> so if you go over a week, what's that coming out of? That's coming out of your owner's salary. So you yeah. need to have something on top of that. And that's where you can really experiment. I mean, you can stay on the low end, say, okay, I'm just going to add 20% to whatever that is. So that would be an extra $32,000. So now you would be at $192,000 for that project. And you could just stay at that. that. That's probably on the on the low end of what you need to mark it up. But 
you could kind of stay on the low end and then you would be able to close more jobs, meaning that you could essentially be more selective and you could be happy at that. You, you might not want to try to push it as far as you could possibly go and like try to squeeze out every dollar because yeah. at that rate, you're still making good money. You have that owner's salary in there and then you've just essentially made an extra $32,000 on this project. So yeah. Do you um prescribe to that school of thought that I forget what the number is, but like a certain percentage of people should be saying you're too expensive. Uh, what is that? It's I, I, there's a lot of like different things that you hear. Like yeah. if you're selling more than 10% of your jobs, then you're too cheap. Yeah. I think that's like a little, I don't know. I think if you're closing a hundred percent of your jobs, you're too cheap. But also, I don't know. I don't, I don't believe any of that actually. Yeah. Like there's no solid number. There's no solid number. I think you'll know, like you can, you, you're going to test the waters and like you get that feedback. But I think no matter how cheap you are, the cheaper you are, the more cheap people are going to inquire for your services. Right. And then you're always going to meet like those cheap people that are like so incredibly cheap that are like, (laughs) even if you're 50% of what the project should cost, they're going to want it for half of that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I think even... Yeah, or the people who just think that, yeah. They just like, want a deal. They want to yeah, know that they got a deal. Exactly. <laughs> so I think I think even if you are the person that's out there charging really low rates, like you'll still get those people that are super cheap, that you're still not going to get all those things. So I think that's really hard to even like quantify. I think, I think it, it kind of goes by how far you are booked out. So like if you if you're a boutique style business like we are and you're booked out for an entire year, it's like okay, let's raise the rates 10 or 20% because mm-hmm. that'll give you more chance to pre-qualify people. You'll get people that want to use you more than anybody else, so they're willing to pay for it. And you know that you have an entire year of backlog. So like if you get go through nine months and you haven't sold one job at that new higher rate, yeah. you can say, okay, let's go back to the old rate because <laughs> we have tested the market and this is, we are already at that upper end of what our market allows. Yeah. And there's always, you know, there's going to be people that say there is no cap. You just have to sell more value. But I think that's just like weird sales speech that like at some point, like there will be, market resistance to like you can't you can't just have infinite value as a contractor you know you can't yeah you can't create enough value to like build a deck a 12 by 12 deck and be like it's worth a million dollars like there is a cap to that so right. you need to figure out where you can be in that spectrum like what does your work qualify you to charge yeah and you need like the most important thing is you need to know that base number that you can't go below. Mm -hmm. So I think for a lot of people, especially in the trades, like they, they came at it from a technician perspective. Like they were just a carpenter or just a, an electrician. And then they started their own business. And it's really easy in the beginning to just be like, I'm charging $10,000 for this job and materials are 5000 and it's going to take me two weeks. Oh my God, I'm making $2,500 a week. Like That's insane. I'm going to be so rich. I was only making $800 a week before when I worked for somebody. Mm-hmm. And then after like a month, you're like, okay, well, I need a new truck. Oh, I need a tool that's six grand. And like, it's really easy to stay busy and not see all those things and take a second, second and just like step back and add all those things up. Yeah to get to a point where you have this information in front of you to like make an informed decision. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's so easy to underestimate things. You, unless you're like actually sitting down and figuring out every single thing that's going to cost you money, then you're going to forget things. Yeah. And it's going to still add up. It adds up so quick. Like even if you are the type of business that like doesn't use heavy equipment, like you're not going out and buying a $80,000 machine. You'd be so surprised how much, like, if you're an electrician, like, how much you spend on, like, pliers and, like, yeah. little things at Lowe's or Home Depot. 
I don't want to just say Lowe's. This is not sponsored by Lowe's or Home Depot. <laughs> yes, I am all. Uh, Menards. I am all Menards <laughs> if you're in the Midwest or whatever people in Canada go to. They probably have one too. Uh, you'd be surprised how much like tool purchases you make yeah. without realizing it. And you're yeah. you're kind of selling yourself short. Yeah. Because those, that's the cost of doing business. <clears throat> yeah. Or I always think about the time when you had to uh, dig a trench and the ground was like frozen or hard or rocky or whatever. And it took you like a super long time. And it's like, like just this year. Yeah. Yeah. It took you a long time because it was, I was like, I'll be back. (laughs) And it took a like, and you you know, your, your time is money. So it's, there's that money. And then it's like, okay, well, if you had to rent some sort of machine to do that, to help you in that process, that also would have cost you money. So which one of those two things is cheaper yeah. Or what is the value of your time? What else could you have been doing yep. during that time while you were stuck digging trenches? Yeah. So even those kinds of things. And it was an unexpected thing. You didn't you didn't know that you were gonna have to that the ground was gonna be it Yeah, was that like, it, you the did ground not. was like concrete. <laughs> and it was like it was probably August. And it wasn't like a particularly hot day, but it was so humid. <laughs> and like I got, I that's was like, what it was. I was thinking it was frozen. It was a hot day. That's what it was. It was so hot. It was like <laughs> insanely, mostly humid. And I'm just like already kind of a sweater. And it was like <laughs> literally like eight oh five a.m. Like I got there right at eight, and I was like, "I, you guys were at a different job or something." Yeah. I was there by myself, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll be, I'll meet up with you guys at like nine or whatever." I got to dig this trench. Yeah. And like at eight oh five, the homeowner came out, and I was like. <laughs> It looked like I just jumped out of a pool and I was only digging for like five minutes. And they were like, yeah, uh, every, are you all right? Is everything okay here? And I'm like, it's just really humid. And like, and then it was just, that was the worst trench I ever had to dig. Yeah. Cause then your hands are all sweaty. Yeah. And like, you're trying to dig and then like you hit the ground and your hands just like slide down the, the shovel. And then like you, you have all these blisters. <sighs> That's yeah. the cost of doing business right so, there. Exactly. And it was yeah. unexpected and you did not expect to spend so much time there. No ground should be that hard. No ground should it be was, that hard. That was not fair. And it was like in a new development. So usually yeah. think things are pretty soft when, you know, they've recently yeah. been churned up. But a lot of but, times they'll just, they'll, they'll bring in like the crappiest fill dirt. Oh, well, that's true. And yeah. sometimes it's just like really dry clay or it's like yeah. has tons of rocks in it. And it's just like, then they bulldozers just driving over it and it's like it's like concrete and that's what it was and it was horrible that was like the, that was thanks for bringing that up sorry. appreciate that sorry i don't mean to stress you out with that memory but that's always think of like you know unexpected costs of business unexpected you didn't expect to be there that long you could have been doing something yes more valuable than digging a trench but it also would have taken you time and money to go rent some sort of mach- trench digger or whatever would have helped in that situation yeah, trench digger <laughs> yeah it's just trencher is what they call it. trencher Trench. We don't really use those, so I don't really know, but I've seen them. They'll we like probably should more. Giant. Yeah. Chainsaws or whatever. Uh, I always think if the if the, if the the ditch is less than like 50 feet long, I'm like, ah, it's going to take more time to go rent something, yeah. come back, then return it. But uh, most of the time it's like, God, I should have rented that. <laughs> but now I'm like a third of the way done, so now it's yeah. really not worth it. And then I get like all the way done. I'm like, I still should have done it at like a third of the way. <laughs> We should just buy a trench. Yeah, maybe we should. Attachment for the dingo. Yeah. Because nobody should have to go through that. <laughs> <laughs> no man or woman should have to go through what I went through. Yeah. I'm really sorry about that. Yeah. It's kind of, uh, yeah. Well, now we know better for next time. <laughs> I guess. We'll probably, I'll probably forget again. Yeah. Be like, ah, it's not worth it. <laughs> just a trench. I can dig it's that. Just a trench. <laughs> uh, yeah. So those, that's just kind of the way I like to look at it. It's, it's very simple and, once again, this is not financial advice. Yeah. This is not even business advice. I guess sort of business advice. Can I say that? It's, I don't think you can say that either. It's just what we do. This is just what we do. <laughs> Take it or leave it. Yeah. Results may vary. <laughs> I feel like you can put that on top of any claim. Yeah. And you can say whatever you want. Yeah. We should start each episode with that. Yeah. Results may vary. This is the hardworking happy <laughs> hour. Results may vary. Yeah. <laughs> Before starting uh, any type of business <clears throat> regimen, consult with your doctor. Yeah. And accountant. Well, that's a good one, too. Put yeah. In there, just in case. Just an idea. Yeah. Um, but so so you know your number. You know your daily number. You know your weekly yeah. number. Does that make rain days and stuff like sting a little bit more when you know? Is it constantly top of mind or do you? No, because 
so I guess I didn't mention this before, but like that should be that's factored into maybe I did mention. Yeah, it. you said that. That's factored you factor into your six weeks out of the fifty two yeah. or whatever. So like you're essentially like not counting on that day. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like that that's accounted for in the productivity that we can expect out of a year. So right. like even if and and this is the part that I think is it's really helpful for is if all of those like usually the rain days are concentrated during certain months. So you're going to get one job where it's like it's a 8 week job and it takes 10 weeks because you had 10 rain days. Yeah. But you didn't lose extra money on that job because you've already f- factored in six weeks where you're going to, it's unworkable, whether yeah. vacation, rain days, whatever else it could be, holidays, you have that factored into your overhead. So it's, it's not taking away profit from that job. It's, and it's not taking productivity away from that job. It is, factored into your yearly rain day allowance. So really you're just looking at everything as a yearly income rather than yeah. breaking it down per job. Yeah, because like people are so a lot of times are so like um taken back, especially when I first started saying that like everybody was on salary. Yeah. They're like how? Like you know, it rains, you don't get anything done. How can you afford to pay people? I'm like, yeah. well, it's just a yearly expense and I figure out how many rain days can we expect and then break that down to a number that, that makes sense. So it's like, and that, that takes you away from looking at it at everything job to job, because, you know, if you have all of those rain days, like usually in May or June, uh, you're going to have a lot of rain days. So it's going to affect one job more than other jobs. But like, it's it's not sucking profit out of that job, essentially. Does that make sense? Yeah. Am I explaining that in a good way? You are, yes. Really? It does make sense, yes. Doing a good job? You're doing a great job. Thank you Sean. so much. Do appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, yeah, so I think I think it's really helpful to look at everything in your business. And, and you know what? Really in life is, you know, step back step a little bit. Step back and look at it. Look at the bigger... From 100, see the, 100 feet see the trees called? from the forest? You can't see the forest from the trees. What's the thing? Mm. You're too much in the weeds, so like you don't under you don't realize you're in the forest till yeah. you're, you're. I don't know so what the saying is, but tree. I know what you're talking about. I know I've heard that. Step back. Yeah. <laughs> you need to step back. See the bigger picture. See the bigger picture. Yeah. See the bigger picture. That's always how I've I've tried to look at everything because when you when you do that, it it eliminates a lot of the ups and downs that come anyway with running a business like it's already enough of an emotional roller coaster to run a business and it's stressful enough already when you when you do anything in business yeah. so if you add in the extra stress of oh my god we just got rained out for two consecutive weeks i'm going to go out of business and i'm going to be broke you have to like you know, kind of trust, okay, well, if it just rained for two weeks straight, like, we're probably going to get less rain some other time later. Yeah. It all evens out. And working outside, like we do, like, if you're not accounting for rain days, then that's uh, such an obvious thing that you need to account for. Like, (laughs) we work outside. It's not going to be... You can't get mad when it rains when you work outside. Yeah. Because the rain makes the grass grow. That's true. It grows our food... We need the rain. The rain is cleansing to the soul and to the lawn. Mind, body, and soul. And and to the patio. (laughs) Whatever. I don't know. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Yes. You're making perfect sense, Sean. You're doing a great job. Appreciate that. Appreciate (laughs) that. Now, what what, what kind of time are we at now? We're at 48 minutes. So I think, unless you've got more to say, we're kind of at uh, secret question time. I think that's about it for me Uh on this topic, but... uh, should I say once again, this is just results may vary. And this is just how I look at it, but not financial advice. Um, I do want to have, a, I do. This isn't the secret question, but you were very passionate yes. about this topic today. Is there something that brought this up or was it just something that was on your mind? I think it's just something that was maybe on my mind. It's, uh, it's always something that will, I'll get questions on mm. like, either through DM or uh, 
you know, just it, it's something that people ask all the time. I don't know what particularly made it more on my mind today, but uh, I just I feel like we haven't really talked about it too much, and I just wanted to share my way of doing it because I was very intimidated getting started with yeah. the complexities of markups and and it just seems to me like when I when I look at forums and people asking questions that a lot of people are so blinded by all these numbers like they're trying to look at all these numbers and they don't completely understand how each of those numbers fits into a larger picture and they just know this person is charging this markup and they're rich. I'm charging this markup and I'm not making any money. Like where, what's going on? Yeah. You know, and like same thing with me saying people are on salary and people being like, that's insane. You can't run a business that way. When I tell people like, you know, people say, well, what's your material markup? I'm like, uh, there isn't really one. Mm -hmm. They're like, you're leaving so much money on the table. Like you could be making so much money off. And I'm like, not really. Because I'm not like, I'm not a store selling deck boards. I'm selling a finished product. And right. at the end of the day, all that really matters is that final price, whether that comes from, you know, it doesn't matter where those numbers come from because we're presenting like one number at the end. Like, yeah. this is a, will you pay this for this? Like, <laughs> this is how much it costs for everything. Yes. If you don't want it, then it's zero. So it's this or zero, <laughs> like you decide, but it doesn't matter how you come up with those numbers, but I think it just makes it so much more confusing and more complicated for a lot of businesses like, like ours where this method just makes sense. Yeah. And you can start to like, as long as you know what those numbers that you can't go below and you know, you figure out your materials and you get really good at estimating how much time you're going to spend on a job that's when you can really like hone in on your numbers and and start testing that spectrum. Like, can I add on an extra 50% and do that and see what the market says, like see how it uh, it relates to other people, however they come up with their numbers. Like at the end of the day, it's like, okay, they're building a similar project. What, what did they charge for it? Mm-hmm. Like at some point it needs to be comparable to, to something else. Like there is a market that, sets some sort of limit on what you can charge and once you have the basics figured out about your own business then you can kind of test those waters and figure out how much more can I add on to this what what extra value can I sell to take that final markup from you know 10% or to 20% to 50% you know it's going to depend on what you do what your skills are how good your brand is all that but it's it's those are like the very basic essentials that I think people need to know. Like they should know it off the back of their hand or head. <laughs> it, should just, it should be on the back of their head at all times. Yes. You know? Okay. Yeah. So something to think about. Yeah. So, um, so money is like a taboo thing to talk about. Usually people yeah. don't like giving up their numbers or what they're charging. Or if you mm-hmm. ask them, it's always kind of like an ambiguous number. Do you think that it would be better if people were more transparent with the money talks? Uh, or what's your thought on that? Do you think it would help the industry or do you think it would be chaotic? Uh, I think, I think it would help. And I think, I think it, it, it depends on so many factors. Like, mm-hmm. I think if more people uh, looked at their local competition more as, uh, you know, kind of a community, mm-hmm. like, that would be the most helpful thing because a lot of people are asking questions on how much you charge for something on a forum where people are from all over the country and it's like yeah. material prices are different everywhere. You know, the demand is different. The market's different. The houses cost a certain amount less, you know, so it can be so all over the place. That it's not helpful at all. But mm-hmm. I think if you can have like a solid group of your peers within your own market, like that's where you're going to get valuable insight as to what the market allows you to charge. And hopefully these are people that are doing comparable things that are, you know, uh, providing comparable value. Like you don't want to compare your numbers to somebody that's, you know, just like throwing things together. I mean, it might be good to to know what does that bottom tier look like? You know, what can somebody get for a third of what I charge? That might be good to know, but you know, 
if you get a solid group of people that you can collaborate with and say, this is what we're charging. Like, this is where I'd be at for a project like this. You're just all going to help each other grow. And they're not your competition. They are your competition is, is those people that are charging a third of what you do, you know? So I think it would be helpful if people were more open about it. Yeah. And not everybody can do every job. There's enough work for all the people that are doing good work out there. So that's true. Um, I never looked at anybody like competition. It's like, hey, we're if we're all doing a good job. We'll all stay busy. Yeah. Let's help each other out. Community of our competition. Yeah. You know? Everybody be cool. Everybody just be chill. <laughs> just have fun. So that's that's it, I guess. That's all I got on that for today. Okay. So you think you can get some good clips out of that? I think so. You think so? I think With I like, can. Because we this new studio. I know. It's going to be pretty sick. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, we got that on three different camera <laughs> angles. It's going to be sick. Perfect. Awesome. All right. All right. Uh, we're pretty much at our happy hour. So do you have a quick uh, secret question? Quick secret question. Yes. Uh, who is your, who would be your dream guest on the podcast? <gasps> That's such a good question. I know, isn't it? Um, I guess say like Abraham Lincoln or something like that. I should say someone who's alive. Someone who's alive and like somebody who like, you know, would be, they don't have to be in the trades, but like maybe somebody mm. like an outside perspective, like this person would, has a cool thing on branding or entrepreneurial spirits. Um, I feel like I, I'm going to have to say Kyle Stumpenhorst because I, when I first got our buildings, are our buildings when I, I think it's Stumpenhorst, right? I, yeah. Okay. I think it's stomping horse. Stomp, stomping stomping horses. horse. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but when I first got into this industry, he was the first person that you were like, check out his content. Yeah. You're going to learn a lot. And I really did. And I, f- I feel like the way that he does things is so interesting. And yeah. I feel like I've genuinely learned a lot from him. So I would love to have him on and interview him and yeah. get to know him a little bit better. That'd be great. Or at all. I only met him once. Yeah. <laughs> love that. All right. Who's yours? Mine. Uh, okay. I will say, don't know why, but this is just the first thing that came to mind. Uh, Richard Branson. Oh, okay. You're going big yeah, I'm just time. Going, They're yeah, going big time. Yeah. Okay. That might be a hard get. But, <laughs> that might uh, be a hard get, but maybe. You know, He's a very charitable guy. Yeah. Okay. Can you work on that? I'll, I'll, I'll call his people. I'll see All what right, I can do. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I just feel like, you know, uh, obviously I'm, I'm big on vision. You're a big vision guy. He's a big, big on, vision guy. He's a big vision guy. <laughs> and I just think uh, it's amazing. I think it's amazing how far my little vision has taken me. Yeah. You know? But look, look what he did with his vision. Yeah. He did he's like going to space. space. And stuff. Yeah. So it's like. <laughs> and cruise ships. I think he's got a cruise can, ship You now. can go as far as you want to go. I only wanted to do Zex and Pat. My vision was kind of limited from the get-go. But if you have a vision to go to space. He's just one of those rich people that goes to space. Yeah. Which I feel like it's kind of a bad look these days. No yeah. offense, Richard, but kind of done. you know, it's like, Was he how many how? rich people do we need to shoot in the space? <laughs> you know, it's like, we got other problems down here. Help us here <laughs> first. True. Stop just shooting yourselves into space for no reason. Please. That's a solid point. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. Uh, was he rich? How did he get rich? Uh, did he start rich and then get records? Right. But did he? Did he? No, I don't think he was wealthy. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. We'll we'll ask him all these questions when we get him on the yeah. podcast. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Rich people going into space is hilarious. Did you see <laughs> when uh when Jeff Bezos went into space? And it looked like a penis. It did, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I saw a meme that was like, "Giant penis goes to space." Plus, the spaceship also looks like a penis. <laughs> so it was kind of like, you know, that was really funny. This is the second episode in a row where we've made fun of him, so we're really oh no, Jeff. <laughs> oh no! Sorry, Jeff. I'm so sorry. You're very rich, and <laughs> you have being wealthy has made you much more handsome. So, uh, yeah. Have you ever noticed that there's not like? I feel like there's <laughs> there's no like really ugly like billionaires. Like having money can get you handsome enough. There's a, it can get you to like a threshold of handsomeness, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think it's just amazing. being attractive kind of gets you a lot farther in life. Yeah, but I think that there's, there's, there's documented transformations of people that are like, they started out like this, then they became a billionaire, 
And now they're like not even the same person. Oh, well, the, you know? I mean, yeah, certainly there's things you can pay for. Yeah. Adjustments. Cool. <laughs> I want to I access some of these adjustments. Please. No, I don't think, I don't think that would, uh, I don't think that's necessary. So but who I, you I, are. I test it out. If I was a billionaire. Oh, yeah, I would want, absolutely test it out. Like, yeah, what do you what, have to lose? You're a billionaire. What programs we got around here for uh, billionaires that want to, uh, I mean. Did you, look slightly better. Yeah. I mean, Jeff Bezos looks like freaking Iron Man. It's probably Let's stop talking about him. He like owns everything. He's gonna shut down our that, servers and stuff. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. I haven't seen him recently. I guess I thought he. I'm not gonna say anything mean. What? You just don't think you didn't think he was like a very handsome man. I mean, he's I not. But he have a... you seen what he used to look like when he started Amazon? He was like a book guy. Yeah, and like no, what I Elon what Musk used like. to look like when he was just like I don't know, like a computer guy. Yeah. Now they're like billionaires, and they're like they don't look the same. They look like different okay. people. It's amazing what money can do. Yeah. I don't know, but I don't know. Yeah, I think that all rich people, like, yeah, yeah. and a celebrity, they all look like, or at the very least, they look like they haven't aged in 20 years. That's you know? true, like yeah. Like Jessica Alba, that woman has not aged at all. She looks yeah. amazing. Or Jennifer Lopez, amazing. Yeah. So. All right. Is that enough for our secret question? We'll I just do the one today. Yeah. yeah, I think we, <laughs> we, you know what? The squirrely energy has not been lost in the new studio I'm glad, space. I'm glad, We're, I'm glad to know here. that. Yeah. It's still in the I'm air. Glad to know that. All right. Well, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Yeah. Let us know what you think of the new studio. Let yeah, us know us what thoughts. guests you want us to have on because we yeah. now have four stools at this cool bar set up. So, yep. uh, and we'll have drinks in the future. This is kind of oh, a last yeah. minute episode. It's Sunday night at, uh, like, like n- almost nine o'clock. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> we're squeezing this in and, Next time we'll have, we'll have drinks. You won't because you're won't. on 75. I'll have a mocktail. Uh, I'll drink your drinks for you and oh. I will get hammered. Oh, well, that, that could be fun. Yeah, that could be fun. <laughs> uh, and then I would have a ride home too. Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. That would work out really well. Perfect. All, All right. right. Well, uh, till next time, this has been the hardworking happy hour. See you next week. <laughs>